Hey guys, it's Bad Snacks here, and yes, I have a different haircut. I'm gonna just acknowledge that so we can move on. Today should be a pretty quick video. It is how I record my acoustic strings. For those of you who don't know me or aren't familiar with my music, I'm a producer, but my primary instrument is violin. I've been playing violin like my whole life, and for a really long time I was also a professional string session player, so I was playing violin, viola, and cello. So I've picked up some tips and tricks throughout the years, and I just figured I would show you guys my workflow when recording acoustic strings. Now, if you're interested in how I process my electric violin, I do have a video on that, but we're not gonna be going over anything electric violin-y today. So I will be going over my inputs, my recording process, and then some of my mixing stuff. Today's video is not sponsored, however, if you're interested in any of the stuff that I'm talking about, I will put an affiliate link for them down below and I get a commission at no cost to you, so if you're interested, please check out those links. And um, without any further ado, let's get into the process, so let's talk about inputs. So the first thing that we need is an audio source. This is my violin and no, it is not a Stradivarius and also no, I don't wanna hear about how the violin in your grandmother's closet might be a Stradivarius. String players, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So we have our input source and then the next thing is microphone. So I'm gonna show you two microphones that I use. The first one being the Rode NT2. This has been a great condenser microphone and I actually got this because it is on uh, indefinite loan from a friend of mine. Shouts out, Barry. But yeah, I've had this for years and I've never had any issues with it. It captures sound really cleanly. It kind of has a little bit of a warm characteristic to it. Nothing crazy noticeable. Um, and yeah, this has been a workhorse mic of mine. I don't really have much to say about it. It's just a really great mic and I think it's a pretty accessible price point, so. Rode NT2. The second mic that I'm gonna talk about is the one that I'm actually talking into right now, which is the Lewitt LCT 640TS. It's a really great mic. It captures sound so cleanly. Um, I've been really enjoying using this. I've been using this almost exclusively since I got it. The other thing that's really cool about this mic is that with the power of this cable, if I put this into the side here, I have dual output mode. Uh, and so basically what that means is that with this one mic, if I use it in a bi-directional way with the two outputs, I can get stereo recordings from one mic and it's totally in phase. So that's also pretty wild. I personally don't record in stereo that often, but if I were like playing an acoustic guitar or something like that, this would be perfect for that. I don't think any other microphone on the market does that and this is a pretty accessible price point as well so I'll link the description of this below. The next thing is my preamp which is the Universal Audio Twinfinity 710 and it's a combination of a solid state preamp and a tube uh, so you can actually use the little mix knob in the middle and kind of like create a combination of the two. It's made a huge difference. There's so much body and so much character that I'm getting out of it and I kind of maybe this is like a bad analogy but I kind of refer to preamps as like the lip filler. It's like it's not completely necessary but at the same time it can like like, totally change the complexion uh, and just make it a little, I don't know, juicier. I, this is probably a terrible analogy, I'm sorry. I got my preamp used from Reverb.com and I got it for like $150 off because it didn't come in the original packaging, which is why I am such a huge proponent of secondhand gear shopping slash why I love Reverb so much. So then moving on from the preamp, it goes into my interface, which is the Focusrite Scarlet 18i8. And this, uh, interface. Speaking of secondhand gear, I bought in a Ralph's parking lot for like a hundred bucks from a stranger. I know it's not the most fancy interface in the world, but honestly, like, it does what I need it to do. I mean, I just, I don't really have any issues with it at all. I mean, I'll probably upgrade down the line maybe, but for now it works for me. So, yeah. So then let's talk about recording techniques. A golden rule of recording is the better the take, the better the mix. It's really hard to fix mistakes in post, so practice your parts, make sure that they're in tune as much as they can be, or that the performance and delivery is what you want it to be. But with that said, I'm gonna just go ahead and make like a couple bars of loops, and I'm gonna show you how I record my pad strings, and then like a little bit of a lead line and stuff, and I'll make it into a little beat, it'll be fun. 
So the first thing that I'm doing is that I'm recording a violin line over the course of two bars and I'm repeating it three times through, letting it loop with the loop bracket and it's capturing every single take that I do. We're not going to be comping today, but watch this. So stop the recording, hit command Z to get rid of that extra recording, but then I duplicate it and then I just shift the tracks over and then I basically reincorporate the takes that have already been recorded. And then I hard pan left and right and check this out. Wide open. So same exact thing, I'm doing a harmony now, recording it three times through. And then, yep, just duplicating it and then scrubbing it back and hard pan. And now I'm adding a third harmony the exact same way. And then same exact thing. And then a little top line here, a little bit of movement, just for fun. We're kind of improvising here. And now we have a four part harmony. A little bit of fade in there. So I love doing this method because it sounds so open. Um, you can also pan it in the way that like if you went to a concert and saw like a chamber music group or something like that and you can pan it accordingly. But anyway, here I am. I'm just grouping all these tracks together, renaming them and then putting a CLA 2A compressor on it and then cutting all of the lows through a pro Q because we don't need any lows. We're, we're playing violin right now. We don't need any lows. And then I add Valhalla Vintage Verb, which I like to affectionately refer to as the gazpacho of reverbs. Because listen to this. Stunning. Bring the decay down just a smidge. And then uh, this is totally optional, but if you want to make it sound a little bit more retro and lo-fi, put the RC20 on there. And I just wanted to duck the mids just a little bit but that distortion and warble is just really nice. And now I'm recording a lead line. So those two passes were a little bit different, so I'm actually going to do the thing where I bring it over and then scrub it back and I'm just hitting command D and duplicating everything and then the same thing I put the CLA 2A on my lead and do the thing with the EQ where I cut the lows and now I've added a little bit of reverb on here I've also brought the volume of the pads down a little bit so that the lead line can stick out and now this is also incredibly optional but sometimes I like to soft tune my pads with a little bit of auto tune at the beginning of the signal chain. It's not always necessary, in fact most of the time it's not. But it helps things gel together just a smidge which is really nice especially when you're one string player and you're trying to play amongst yourself. Um, oftentimes I try to actually not use too much vibrato because then that way the sounds can blend a little bit more in tune. And then here I'm basically building a beat out of all these drum samples. Shouts out to The Count for his drum sample pack 4. And then this is what we got. And I often like to sidechain my pad strings. And I'm also sidechaining my lead here after putting a crazy, super massive delay on it. Cutting the highs on the delay so it's not so sharp in texture. And that's our beat. So yeah, 
yeah, that's uh, essentially how I record my strings, which I do very often in my music. A lot of these techniques can also work for other instruments that doesn't have to just be strings. If you want to support me and this channel, uh, my music is in the description. I also have a Twitch where I do a lot of beat creation and hanging out and beat battles and all that stuff. Uh, if you want to follow that and yeah, go forth and conquer.